Stock screen. Product replenishments. Minimums, maximums. So in another video, you'll learn how to do purchase orders and generate replenishment um, orders and things like that. However, in this video, we're going to talk about how you actually set minimums and maximums. Minimums and maximums are values that when it comes to reordering any stock, the computer will know how much to order based on what you're going to tell it. You do this via two simple numbers, minimum and maximum. So to explain a bit better, let's go into Stock Manager here. Just do a search. And you can see two columns, minimum and maximum. And this is all you do in your head when you're walking around with a clipboard or anything deciding how much should you reorder. Minimum basically means what's the least amount you're happy with before you think it's time to buy some more. And maximum means if it is time to buy some more, what's the most you want on the shelf? Okay, so at the moment, all the minimums are set to minus one. That's our way of saying it, never reorder this product. Every product always starts with minimum of minus one. These minimums and maximums are unique to the store you're currently pointing to. So every every product has a different minimum and maximum depending on what store you're in. At the moment, we've got three in stock. So if we said, when I get down to say five or less, it's time to buy some more. So in this case, the computer would order some more. The maximum is what's the most we want on the shelf? Well, we have to order them in cases of 24. But if I just said 23, it wouldn't matter. The system will always round up to the nearest case size. In this case, 24. So, for example, if you said I need to order 25, the computer is going to order 48. It would rather be told off for ordering too much than not enough. So, but keep that in mind when you're setting your minimums and maximums on what the case size is. So in this product, I can actually order it from supplier 1 or supplier 2, but both of them have case sizes of 24. So really, that should be divisible by the case size, the maximum. At the moment, we've got 3 in stock. So let's see if this would what this would do. So is 3 less than 5? The answer is yes. So if we were placing an order with supplier 1, the system would order this product because three is less than five. If it's five or less, so five, four, three, two, one, or zero, the system would order more of them. 24 is the maximum we want. So 24 minus three is 21. So under, if the case size is one, the system would order 21. But the case size isn't 21, it's 24. So it will round it up to the nearest case size, which is 24. So the system would order 24. So it doesn't really matter whether you had five in stock, four in stock, three, two, one, or zero, you'll always get a case of 24. But if you had six in stock, it wouldn't order any because six is above five. So setting these minimums and maximums is a bit of an art. Um, if you're, another example could be, by the way, if you have Minimum one, maximum one. You could say, as soon as I've sold that one item, bring me another one in. Arguably, it wouldn't matter if the um, minimum is zero or one. They'll still get exactly the same situation in that, by the way. Uh, some people have minimum 10, maximum 10. So as soon as any of them are sold, on the next time we place an order with whatever supplier it may be, order the correct amount to bring us back up to our maximum. So you can do different tricks and things like that with them as well. The case size, again, can't be mentioned too many times, is very and a very important factor. So you may actually choose to order from a particular supplier because they've got a lower case size than another supplier, which arguably could be cheaper, but forces you to buy in a higher case size or pack size. A few things to be considering when you're working out your minimums and maximums is to look at the stats down here. You could look at this in a day view, month view or anything like that. Um, you could look at this in a um, basic stats view there. You know, the most sold in a week, the least sold in a week, four and four there. So you can say, well, should I have such a large number when the most I ever sell in a week is four and I order this every week. However, if your case size is 24, it wouldn't make much of a difference, I suppose. 
Sometimes, though, you might need a bit more information or a bit more help. And for that, we actually have a massive tool up here called Replenishment Calculator. OK, so do a search, show all the items that you're interested on doing this. Press Replenishment Calculator. Let's just open up on a different screen. I'll just bring that there. And what you do is you say, consider all the sales from this date to this date. Maybe there was a, a different sort of circumstances in a different year or so on. How often do you reorder this product? Seven days, 14 days, 30 days, whatever it may be. Um, consider which stores. So if you are the head office and you have to order for all of the stores, turn tick them all so it can understand that. And just press retrieve results and calculate. What this does is it shows how many is in stock, how many is in stock in the whole organization. So the sum of all the stores. What the current minimum and maximum is when you first sold this and how many sales have been done and the maximum sales in a selling period and the minimum in a sales period. In other words, if you order every seven days, this is the most you've sold in every one of those seven days. Uh, but if you do it every 14 days, you may get different results. This is obviously all fake data, so we're not going to get much difference in this scenario. But you can use this with the averages and the number of selling periods to consider from it to work out what your minimums and maximums are. So in other words, if your average is quite close to your maximum sales, then you keep running out and you need to be increasing your maximum and holding more stock. However, if your average is quite close to your minimum, then that means that you may have the odd times when there's a huge, disc, you know, uh, anomaly. Uh, but generally, you're not selling as many as you think you are, and you may want to reduce it. You can choose different options down here and choose which columns you do and want to see. So if you are showing a large amount of results, you may want to turn some of these off for better performances. You can also hide these filters anyway as well. But the replenishment calculator can be quite a useful tool for working out what minimums and maximums you should use. A final bit of advice would be to say, you may think that setting minimums and maximums, if you have a lot of products in your store, you may think it's gonna take me ages to do all these. There are certain tricks you can use. The first one would be narrow it down to a particular supplier first. Just set minimums and maximums for just one supplier, generate an order and see how it gets on. And then move up to the second bit, um, smaller supply and the third and so on until you get to your largest suppliers if you only have one supplier or two then perhaps break that down to certain categories of those suppliers another thing people may want to do is set the minimum equal sorry the maximum sorry equal to the current level of stock you have at the moment so if you think your store is quite full at the moment if it's got three in stock set the maximum to three if there's nine in stock set the maximum to nine and then set the minimum to about 30% perhaps of that value. And then you can say, look, this shop is full. I always want to keep it at those levels. And then as you place your orders, you will have to adjust some of the um, anomalies or adjustments here and there, but most of it could be quite close to what the actual minimums and maximums you, you actually want them to be. So, of course, one could argue the best way to do it is just simply to do them all manually one by one. And then the person who's responsible for doing all the reordering, you can go from hours or days all the way down to minutes. You can change these minimums and maximums in the stock screen. You can change them on this screen here as well. Reorder minimum and maximum. You can do it on the question mark on the sales screen. You can do it on the app. You can do it on the purchase order screen. You can do it on that replenishment calculator. There is a lot of sections where you can change the minimums and maximums. So if I was to say these two products here, I could say question mark and I can do it under permanent minimum and maximum or again, press edit product and do it there as well. So again, there's plenty of spaces and checks. You can change the minimum and maximum. Uh, it's up to you where you find it easiest. Personally, I think you should do it on the stock screen because you have access to the stats. So you can check to see, you know, you may think, oh, we sell loads of them, but it could just be that the shelf is just rearranged in a way and you've been ordering too much and you don't need to. And obviously the inverse of that can also be true as well. 
One last thing to mention is seasonal ordering is also a possibility as well. So if you pick a product such as this one and you say it has a minimum of, well in this case minus one and three, if you go to seasonal ordering you can create a record that says for this particular store the minimum and maximum is this between this date and this date. So for example uh, you might say Christmas stock only order it during the months of November and December but outside of that period it should be minus one minimum never reorder basically you can also set minimums and maximums to override on certain days of the week so you might say actually on a Saturday the minimum is this much and the maximum is this much but on a Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday it should be this number or this number Lastly, you can also set a minimum and maximum based on a specific supplier. So if you're ordering from supplier 1, then use the normal minimum and maximum. But if it's supplier 2, then override it with a particular minimum and maximum. So you can have multiple ones of these layered up on top of each other as well. So you can use multiple ones um, for each record. So seasonal ordering can be very useful as well rather than just a simple basic minimum and maximum, especially for certain products such as seasonal products.